Hey there everyone, this is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I wanna share some music production tips and techniques while recreating Rufus the Souls on my knees. So in a moment, I'm gonna play you the breakdown, the finished product, and then I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step and how to recreate that. The goal isn't necessarily to show you the presets and patches that I'm using, but to share the why and how behind creating the sounds that you can hear in this song. So let's check out the finished product. So there's a lot to cover in this video, so be sure to watch it till the end because all the nuances and small details that I do in the synth sound design and the drums and the vocal production could really benefit you in your upcoming projects. I also want to take this time to encourage you that if you're serious about producing your very own music but are looking for that professional guidance to help you and that mentorship opportunity, well then I want to direct your attention to BeatAcademy.com and take advantage of all the resources that I have available for you there. There are plenty of free courses already there to help you take that next step forward with your music production. So let's focus our attention on this pulsating synth that we can hear uh, throughout the track but it's particularly dominant in the beginning of the song. There's this pulsating action, and then it has this, you know, some grit to it, there's some presence, and in my mind, I'm already getting this wobble or this movement that we can probably accomplish using some kind of filter envelope. So let's start with using Ableton Live's Wavetable plugin. I'm gonna click drag and drop that, and you can use any two or more oscillator synth that you have in your DAW um, to follow along, and you, you'll get pretty much the same exact results. So let's take a listen to the chords. Now already, that's you know half the battle. What I mean by that is, that's the pulsating performance that we're looking for. So I went ahead and recorded these notes, but played at an eighth note interval. Now let's go ahead and shape the tone of the sound. So right now it's set to a sine wave. We have one oscillator set to a sine wave. Let's change this from sine wave to sawtooth. It's giving us more of that presence, that tonal presence and the buzz. Let's combine our, our first oscillator with another oscillator and set this to a sawtooth and see what we get. Let's set this a whole octave higher so that we can really hear the uh, difference of that second oscillator. And let's see what it sounds like going from sawtooth to square. Let's lower this in the mix. And now let's go ahead and turn our frequency cutoff lower. And get just a little bit of resonance and peak. Now that's cool. That kind of puts a blanket and changes the mood so it's not so bright. Now what we need to do is structure and manipulate the body of the synth. So let's go over here to our amp envelope. Let's increase the attack a little bit and increase the sustain. That way that once each of those eighth notes are playing, um, it'll just, hold on to those notes a little longer. So let's do right about here and see what that gets us. Let's also extend the release so that you can hear a little bit of the tail of the sound after each note plays. And we'll extend our decay a little bit. And now let's widen up the sound by enabling the unison. And if you're following along, you're not using the wavetable, maybe you're on Logic or Studio One, um, just look for any unison or voices that you might find on the synth that you're having. And you can go to the unison and just hit any classic. And let's just set this to two voices and go from zero and see and move it up till we get uh, a nice response. That's cool there. Now let's go ahead and add some of that grit that we can hear in the reference. And I'm gonna do this by going to our drive folder and using our pedal plugin. So we're basically gonna use some overdrive here. And I'm gonna enable the sub 
And I'm also gonna turn the sub oscillator on to the wavetable and give a little bit of more of that low end presence, um, low end harmonics. Now let's add a chorus plugin so we can now widen up the distorted synth. So I'm gonna go into our pitch modulation, chorus, and drag that right on there. Now that's cool, that's widen that up. I might just wanna use the high pass, get rid of that, and maybe open up the width a little more. Let's widen that up a little bit. Now, let's use a filter plugin to create that, to really to accentuate more of that pulsating action that we hear. Now, see how adding the filter, some of you might think, well, why don't we just use the filter in the synth? Well, because then that's going to affect the pedal, which then affects the chorus, which then affects whatever plugins we add to it. So the order of plugins do play a big role in the sound design and the overall tone and shape of the sound that you're trying to create. So I like what the synth is doing. Let's add distortion to create some of that greediness and more harmonic information on it. Then the chorus to widen that up, then the filter to really just bring it back down. Now we wanna go ahead and to be able to control when we can open and close that filter cutoff. So I wanna do that, and you could use the LFO that's on board the filter, but I wanna have a little bit more control over how that LFO uh, modulates the cutoff. So for this, we're gonna head over to our modulators folder in Ableton Live and use our Shaper plugin. Now, if you're not using Ableton Live, you can consider plugins such as LFO Tool, or there's plenty of other plugins that allow you to manipulate the actual modulation of a parameter. In this case, using the shaper allows me to hit the map button, and then I can choose any parameter on any plugin to map to this LFO. So we'll choose the filter frequency. Now you can see it's just going up and down, up and down, because it's set to the current rate and the depth that we have here. So let's go ahead and adjust the shaper so we can get the modulation the way we want it. So right now, let's just nudge the LFO. So it starts a little back here and we'll add another dot and see what we get here. And also bring the 100% all the way down to 80. This is gonna control the amount. If it's set to 100%, that means that the filter will open up to 100%, its full maximum value. If you lower it down, as you can see, the filter frequency does less of the opening. So let's try it over here and then just bring the depth down. Let's see, like maybe around there and set this to every eighth note. So if we increase the depth, maybe this part here, let's see what this sounds like. Now it's a little different than using just this onboard LFO in the filter because I'm somewhat limited to the shape. As you can see here, we can then have more freedom and control and determine the range in which the filter opens up. So this is a really cool tool. Now let's just use a EQ afterwards just to kind of make sure that not a lot of the low end will be creeping through as later on we start to layer it with a sub synth and other bases. All right, now let's focus in on the drums. So I have a kick, couple layered claps and a loop all grouped together in my drum bus. And uh, I wanna focus in on the kick here. I'm gonna solo this. I'm using a plugin called Big Kick to actually generate the kick drum here. So the way this works is you just generate a MIDI pattern that you want the kick to play in. In this case, just a four on the floor. And I use all the parameters here to shape the kick the way I like it. I love this plugin because it's pretty cool because as you go along throughout the shaping of the overall mix uh, of the project, you can actually go back in here and just shape the actual kick to maybe be a lot more punchier and or a lot beefier, it depends uh, on how you personally like it. And you can also layer that top uh, that main kick with a top kick. to get more of that presence on there. Um, just basically saturating the kick using Ableton Live Saturator, just to give a lot more beef. We have it set to the song, the soft sign, and then layering that with our clap. 
you might notice that this is a MIDI instrument that I converted into an instrument rack so that I can layer two separate claps together just to curate that texture that we're looking for with the clap. And then just tying those two, kind of gluing these two elements together with a loop that pretty much had the same similar type of pattern as our reference. So with all those together, we're gonna be bussing them and grouping them into the drum, drum rack. And I'm using the Drum Rust plugin, an EQ and a compressor to kind of tighten all those three, those three elements together to make it feel more cohesive. Now, if you run into the issue where your drums just don't sound, I don't know, big enough, or especially when you reference them back, there's just something missing from them. A lot of times parallel processing can help with that because you can maintain the dynamics and just overall body of your drums, but yet then couple it with some distorted or uh, you know compressed and processed drums and then mix them together to really create a unique type of sound. So here on Send C, I'm gonna send some of those, I'm gonna send our drum bus to Send C and head over to our return track C, which has a lot of distortion process to it. So let's just solo this track here. So I have an overdrive filtered of the low end out. So we're not really just kind of distorting the kick and all that stuff here. And some redux to add some digital distortion. And I was playing around with some dynamic too, but I ended up using the erosion plugin, which is adding some cool noise and width to it. Now look what happens when we mix and blend this in to our drums. Like all the life gets taken away when we lower that return, right? So um, that's how it adds the sizzle and adds that grit and that saturation to really help those drums kind of stick out in the mix. Now let's go ahead and start layering our synth. This is just a great way to create that depth and dimension that you sometimes feel is lacking from your synths. So here we have that main synth. Let's just create a uh, another MIDI track. And what I'm gonna do is drag and drop the MIDI from our uh, first synth and let's go in here and only use the bottom row notes because we're going to uh, make this our baseline to kind of layer with that. So I'll do this, hit the zero button. So it just deactivates those notes and mutes them. And now we just have the lower tonal notes here that we're gonna be using for the baseline. And I'll just copy this over so it repeats. And let's use our wavetable. Just drag and drop that here and solo this. Now we'll use that for a sub since the sine wave works well for that. But right now let's just create more of that 80s type of bass and that will be just having two sawtooths together right here. And then let's slightly detune one oscillator. And let's go ahead and bring our cutoff down and map our filter frequency knob to the envelope. And then head over here to envelope two to go ahead and shape the response of that filter frequency. So lowering the sustain and the decay. All right, and then opening up the unison, we'll go back to classic. And just playing around with and tweaking it to taste adding some distortion. Let's go with our amp simulator here, bring the dry and wet down. That seems cool and filter this out. So we'll filter this out and let's go a whole octave lower. I think this will get us a lot of more of that, um, just the overall tone that I'm looking for. That's much better. I need to make sure to switch the amp envelope to dual. So since we are using this classic unison, it's gonna widen it up and setting it to mono will defeat the purpose. We'll fill, let's go ahead and add a chorus after this as well.
right? And now what we'll do is let's add some side chaining. So I'm going to go here, put a compressor after that. And I want this to pulsate. I want to have a little more of that ducking action. So we'll side chain and say we'll get the source from the big kick to be our source of side chaining. There you go. And let's see this together. So there you go. Now we'll go ahead and recreate another track. I'll just actually duplicate this. This will be our sub. Go ahead and call this sub here. And we'll go and take some of these elements off and focus on just having one oscillator set to the sine wave. And we'll go ahead and unmap the filter frequency. And I also want to make sure that that second bass, we'll put an EQ there, doesn't eat away a lot of the... All right, now for that brass sound that we can hear throughout the song. And for this, I'm going to be using Serum for the sound design. And um, so I've got the patch here. Let me just play it. Now what's going on here is that we have oscillator A uh, set to the bass analog section. I'm using the subby saw. Now this was just kind of going through different type of waveforms that started off with a gritty harmonic sense to it, right? That just sounded a little bit gritty. And that's kind of what I started with. So going over here, analog, looking for subby saw, and then coupling that with oscillator two, going to analog and typing in filthy. Just pairing those two and seeing the result it got me, I was like, okay, here's a gritty harmonic, you know, um, type of sound that I want to go ahead and then filter and use. So we've got the filter on, set to control oscillators A and B. So I have the filter right around here, just really cutting off, and I have it set to MG low six. Now, once that is done, we're gonna do a little bit of routing and mapping. So envelope one then gets mapped over to the cutoff. And we're just messing around with the overall shape. This is shaping the overall body and how the brassy type of tone or sound is created. So do we want a short, stabby type of brass? Well, then you would lower the sustain. If you want it to linger a little longer, then you would raise the sustain. Right? So that all depends here. The sustain and just tweaking the release and then moving the attack up, but it bringing up the slope as well. Because when it's down, you're getting that whoop, that build up to the attack. So we want the slope to be right up there. Now, envelope one is mapped to the cutoff, and you're just kind of toying around with how open you would want that to be. And it's also going to be mapped to the wave position of oscillator A. The reason why I'm going with Serum instead of the wave table in Ableton Live is that I was messing around here with the unison for each individual oscillator. So here I have this set to eight and just slightly detuning this. And I have oscillator two uh, detuned over to six unison voices. And then I'm also mapping LFO one to certain places. Now, how do I get to this? How do you know when to map LFO one and where and what you should be mapping? Well, the way I'm looking at it and the way I'm thinking about this is, okay, I would like, as it opens up, as we get to that warm, that opening part of the sound, I would like to add some more harshness to it or some grittiness because I'm thinking, you know, if you're, if you're playing trombone, if you're playing a brass instrument, when you blow really loud, it's not just the volume that changes, but the embouchure, everything that resonates with the horn itself adds some harmonics to it as well. So thinking, thinking that way, um, I want there to be some fluctuation, some changes when that sound opens up. That's why I'm mapping LFO1 to some of these over here. So what's happening is I'm choosing right here, where's uh, the F, I'm choosing FM. So uh, FM modulation from oscillator B. So oscillator B is going to affect the way oscillator A um, sounds. 
and this LFO is mapped there so that it changes, so that actually fluctuates when it opens. So if we just did, um, so let me just bypass, we're gonna bypass these and see if you can spot and notice the difference. It does the same, you're getting the same swell and that brass tone. Now, let's go ahead and do this. There's a little bit of grit added to when the movement's happening. That's all there. But you know, it's not like, you notice it hasn't wasn't a drastic change. So giving a little bit filter drive, um, cranking up the fat a little bit, making sure the voicing is set to mono. And then under the hood here with the effects, we're adding some distortion. Um, I'm gonna head over here to diode one and really crank a lot of that greediness to it. And then right underneath that, just using the onboard chorus effect, some of the reverb stock into this, and then using the EQ to take away all the low end that happens that the synth is creating. So we want to remove that. Um, I can just bypass that and use an EQ afterwards, but it's already on here and I figure just keep it all in house. And there you go. Now I have some delay here on my return track A, and I have a reverb on D as well. So I'll add a little bit more reverb and some delay to the horns as well. Now I'm also gonna just duplicate this drum track or use any other synth that has white noise to create some white noise as a layer to this to really help fill up the space. So just click that serum brass track we created, hit uh, Command D to duplicate that. And then let's open up the hood of that serum track and pretty much let's just turn off oscillator B and A and the filter and just turn on the noise here. And then just layer that with the brass. Adds a lot of air to it as well. And that's gonna be helpful just to kind of add air overall to the mix. So throughout the track, there's this really cool synth patch that is used as a transitional piece that really helps build tension. And I'm just a sucker for that type of sound. It's this really cool retro analogy type sounding synth. So I wanna show you how to recreate that. Here's the synth. So for this, I'm using Ableton Live's analog synth. And what we're essentially doing is having two oscillators set to a sawtooth. And we're just detuning it. And we're actually assigning that detune to an LFO. So oscillator one is set to a sawtooth. Oscillator two is also set to a sawtooth. But oscillator two is a whole octave higher. Now, the key thing to uh, keep in mind here is that both oscillators, you can see is the perimeters change here in the middle section. Oscillator one, I'm sending like it's 0.05 to LFO one. And that's the pitch modulation. And that's going to modulate the pitch. If I increase this, you know, you know 0.5, that's barely nothing. But look what happens when I increase this. It becomes really dramatic. So 0.05, I was just dialing up and down till I got enough of that modulating of the pitch where it felt really vintagey. And then here you can set the, the rate of that LFO. So just make sure to enable LFO one and two. Then what I'm doing is inside the actual filter envelope, I'm going to assign the the way the filter envelope reacts. So let's go from expression by default, it's set there, and change the slope to linear. And I'm just basically kind of moving the release a little bit and the sustain and decay and giving this a nice slow attack. And we're gonna be automating the filter cutoff, as you can see here. So it starts off low and then opens up to give that nice build up here. Then we go ahead and use a chorus plugin to widen this up. And it's cool. So that's, this is a really cool sounding uh, synth. 
and I love how they use it as a way to transition from one section to the next. Let's focus our attention on some of the vocals. Now we've got a couple things happening here. We have the vocal female sample that's happening throughout the thing, which really becomes a signature aspect of this song. And then you actually have the lead male vocal going on as well, which is the spotlight of the overall track. So focusing on the female um, sample or just that little riff that we hear. Well, I don't know where that sample is. So the best way for me to approach that is to sing it an octave lower and then transposing that and layering that with even a, a, another octave transpose to kind of simulate that type of an effect. So here we have my vocal and let me just play you the lower octave one. So what I've done was, this is how I actually recorded the audio. We've got an EQ, just taking away some of that low end and just a uh, pitch plugin here by Waves Real Time Tune. Make sure that I don't sound like an exploding kitten. And, and once I have, that's the octave I sang it in because I just can't hit that register. I just can't sing that high. So I sang it at this octave. And then once I've gotten that down, I go into the actual uh, region, go a whole uh, octave higher and make sure that the algorithm is set to complex pro because any other mode will make it sound like a chipmunk. So we want complex pro, so it keeps the formats, but just changes the octave. And then I'm gonna layer that with another, the same thing, I'm just copying that into another track and going 24 semitones up. So that's an octave above the octave I just created. So those two are living together and I've grouped them into a bus here that's gonna have a little bit of distortion, some glue compression to kind of just sandwich those two in and the EQ to just remove a lot of the low end. I'm trying to treat this as like a sample that I'm re-triggering. And I'm inserting all these effects here. So we've got the delay set to a quarter note. And then we have a reverb. So a, a, it's really a lot of reverb directly onto this sample. Now what's interesting is I have this shifter plugin from Ableton Live, and this is in the pitch and modulation folder. And this is allowing me to mix and blend and create this this cool widening, it's almost like a doubler because it's just shifting over the sense. I'm just shifting up the sense a little bit and detuning it slightly to create more of that width that I'd like. I have it set to wide and just increasing that up. And then I have a compressor that I'm now going to sidechain to our kick drum. And this is really gonna help that vocal just kind of pulsate. And then for the main vocals or the chorus vocals, I just went ahead and tracked myself doing a lead vocal. And that's this one here. Looks like I'm on my knees again. So just track that. Um, I'll walk you a little bit through the processing of the lead vocal. We've got a gate to just eliminate any one of noise, some tuning using the, the Waves real-time tuning here, um, just some EQing to just kind of, I'm doing some uh, corrective EQing at first. So I clean up the vocal, take up things I don't want so that any other processing I'm adding to it doesn't get any frequencies or things that are harsh or it doesn't really need to have. Uh, once I've done that, I wanna go ahead and get a nice overall controlled dynamic performance and that's what's gonna you know, shape the overall tone a little, I mean, the body of my vocal. And I'm using the new UADX plugins, the Spark plugins. Looks like I'm on my knee. And then I do some DSing to control any of the, the sibilance that comes through. And I'm adding some air with the Mac EQ there. I've got it set to 40, just cranking up some of that air there. And using the Ableton Live Dynamic 2 plugin to add some saturation to the vocal. I love saturation on vocals because it adds a grit and it adds a lot of character to it. So what I do is I set this to stun at 100%. Looks like I'm on 
I do this to, to kind of shape the tone, get it to the, the texture that I like, and then dial it down. Looks like I'm on my knees again. And then I just Look. top it up with a dynamic EQ to just tame any certain frequencies that kind of jump out a little bit. And that is the decision to blend this with the rest of the mix. Now I have, as you can see here, my background vocals, just layering two tracks, similar type of tone and take, meaning the character and the attitude that I have with my lead vocal. I'm gonna use just these two tracks to kind of um, emulate that same type of attitude. Looks like I'm on my knees. Okay, and this is panned hard left, panned hard right. And then the other two vocals here, they're not the same attitude. I'm changing the attitude or the way I'm performing those. So, Looks like I'm on my knees again. so these are a lot softer. I was a lot closer to the microphone. So you might want to experiment with your positioning or um, your proximity effect with the way you're performing. So there's a little bit of change in texture with the vocals overall. So this is the background vocals mixed with my lead vocal. I have them all grouped. I have a background vocal bus, my lead vocal, and I group them all into my vocal bus, which I'm then using the Waves R compressor to just sandwich these two together, some Soothe to eliminate any of these harsh frequencies as they are, you know, all these vocals compounded with one another. You start to build up with certain frequencies, and I love what Soothe is doing to control that. Looks like I'm on my knees. And then I'm just adding some uh, some tape saturation to add a little bit of that low mid and that beef to it and smooth it out. And then believe it or not, I'm adding sidechain to the vocal bus, just really, really light. Looks like I'm on my knees again. Just really light. I just wanted it to feel like it was just moving that way. Um, just had a sense of putting it on just to experiment to see what it sounded like and it worked out. I'm also doing some effect processing on these vocals as well. So as you can see here in uh, the vocal lead vocal bus, we have uh, some delay, my quarter note delay, and I have a reverb on D. So my return track, I have an EQ to eliminate some of the low end. And I'm using the Valhalla Vintage Verb set to the 80s and Bright Hall preset just giving a little bit of decay to, so we have that depth there. And then I'm sending the vocal over to return track E, which has that shifter plugin again. So the shifter plugin, just kind of really excited with how it sounds and what it's doing. And uh, it's really just smearing and creating the vocal to kind of just widen up by detuning it. So I'll just solo the return. And now I'll go ahead and solo the lead vocal. Looks like I'm on my knees again. And so if I just crank that. Looks like I'm on my knees again. Love the width it's adding to the vocal. So I like to give a little more of that juice to my lead vocal and maybe just a pinch to my background vocals. Looks like I'm on my knees again. And then let's go ahead and see what it sounds like with the reverb as well. Looks like I'm on my knees again. So let's see what it sounds like now with the vocals and with the other elements that we've created. I hope this video has been helpful, encouraging, and inspiring in any way. And as my gift to you for watching this video, I'd love to send you a sample pack loaded with construction kits, loops, one shots, and effects. And this works in any DAW. So if you're following along, maybe you're using Logic, Studio One, Pro Tools, or FL Studio, you can absolutely access this sample pack, just drag and drop, and they're absolutely royalty free, so you can use them in any of your projects and songs, and it's yours 100% free. As well, if you want to download this Ableton Live session and follow along or take advantage of the presets and patches that I have in this session, as well as any session from the breakdown videos in my channel, then definitely visit beatacademy.com pack and download them today. 
Now, I also want to direct your attention. If you are looking for professional guidance to help you move forward with producing your own music, maybe you're just getting started with music production, or maybe you've been producing for a while, but you could use the accountability and the encouragement of someone mentoring you throughout that process, then definitely check out beatacademy.com. That's where I'm spending a lot of my time and energy in this season of my life, pouring into aspiring musicians, singer songwriters, producers, and anyone who wants to take their next step forward with producing their music. So go ahead and visit beatacademy.com and sign up for any one of the free courses that I have available for you there. And be sure to subscribe, like this video so that you can stay up to date with upcoming releases that I'll be doing on this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.